Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And Alex, do you know what time it is? Adventure time? <laughs> no, it's it's time to talk about Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> oh. it's, all, it's all anyone has been talking about all week. Yep. And hey, the great thing about it is, Alex, we've waited eight years for it to arrive and uh, probably have to wait another eight years for it to be optimized so you can play it smoothly. <laughs> Perfect. So, it's just perfect. what I wanted in a game. It's it just works. It just anyway, works. it's allegedly the Skyrim of 2020. It's allegedly, allegedly the Skyrim of 2020 and the Crisis of 2020. Ah, uh, yes, that's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, Crisis used to be a benchmark uh, for your system, and now uh, Cyberpunk is probably going to be the benchmark for your system. However, that's actually that's actually not what we're talking about today. Sorry, folks. I know you were really hoping. But we are talking about something else that has apparently been delayed for many years that we were not aware of. Uh, a discussion on initiative. This is something... The first question that I, I needed to ask when this was brought up on our forums, because we are actually doing this by popular request, <laughs> was, have we actually discussed initiative before? You thought we might have? I thought we did a show on initiative. And I knew that we had talked about it at some point, but as far as I can tell, I don't think we actually ever did an actual episode on it specifically. Yeah, we've, apparently we've talked about it in bits and pieces here and there, but yeah, we've apparently never actually done like our own show on initiative. Yeah, and, and the thing that I was thinking about that might have been something you were thinking about was um, that we, we did do a discussion at one point about like simultaneous actions in combat you were kind of discussing how you like to run combat where all characters are essentially acting at the same time rather in in, in a turn order sequence yeah. to declare who who d does actions first i have a feeling that when people are thinking about initiative the the general way people are doing it in like a dnd &D, it would be a little bit closer to like an an alpha strike or thinking like first strike in magic where somebody has priority because they got a higher initiative out of the gate. Right. I know that's not necessarily how you run it, but that's usually how D&D uh, &D runs. Like I think in the rules is written, uh, it's uh, supposed to be. Generally, I think, yeah. In most RPGs, just in general that I've played, initiative is usually like you get to do your thing first and no one has any say in it until their initiative comes up. Right. Uh, yeah. Has that generally been your experience outside of the games that you were running? Um, generally, yeah. It's whoever goes first goes first kind of deal. Um, yeah. So it's like, oh, I got the highest initiative. You go first and all your stuff happens first. And then like if you kill all the enemies on your turn, then there's no enemies on the next person's turn. I mean, I understood that because I, I think in some ways that kind of goes from an older school idea of just gaming in general, which is that, like, if you're playing a board game, that's how that works. You know, there's a turn order. You know, right. Somebody does their thing, and, and then the next person does their thing. And actually, even in war gaming, if you were to look at that, like, people take turns. And right. so, in war gaming, though, that, that is a question that I had. Is that just a straight, this person goes and then this person goes? Or does, like speed for the different uh units come into play typically i'm i'm really only familiar with like warhammer sure but typically in that it's yes uh, one person takes their whole turn with their entire mm. army and then the next person does the same got it. unless you're playing in teams and it's like the two of you on one team or however many of you on a team do it uh, at one time and then the next one is the next person and I, I do, I do want to uh, talk a little bit about the idea of speed informing that, but I'm, I'm coming back to that in a minute. My general thought about initiative, and you, you can tell me if you think about it differently, but my, my thought about it was that it was basically a utility for mechanics. It, it needed to be in there to organize combat in some way, 
but it, it's not the kind of mechanic that usually gets fleshed out to any meaningful degree. I've never felt like it is. Flesh, flesh out, like, okay, when you say that, what do you mean by flesh out in a meaningful degree? Uh, we can go into this a bit later if you want to, but, like, how would you flesh it out is what I'm curious about. Okay, well, that's that's the thing. I don't think many people have even really discussed ways that you could make initiative more than just, here's the number that you get, and now you go first for combat. Sort of like I was talking about with speed. Does speed actually determine... Uh, when you're able to get into a turn order, does initiative have any impact on the place that you are in in the storyline or, you know, any kind of impacts like that? If I say, oh, I get the jump on uh, the assassin uh, and I've made a nice choice there, does that have any kind of effect on initiative? Does the fact that my initiative is high have any impact on the storyline besides just the combat part? It fe- It always felt like Initiative just as a concept was just there to make sure that combat was organized, and outside of that, it really didn't have functionality in the system. Like, it didn't, it, initiative doesn't work outside of combat at all. Um, Generally, I mean, I've never experienced that. Yeah, no, it really doesn't. Uh, or that it's that it informs any other things that you're doing, or that it would have any kind of modification to things that you were doing, which you kind of assume it might, especially in things that are speed or reflex based. But but again, like basically you're rolling for initiative to determine your turn order in combat. And outside of that, it really doesn't do anything. It just kind of hangs around and looks at you with big puppy dog eyes saying, please go into combat so I can be useful. (laughs) (laughs) Arguably the longest part of the game, the combat uh, it doesn't yeah. really have much to go into it. You're right. That was also the other thing that I was curious about, too, is my experience with D&D, at least, is you roll for initiative at the start of combat, and then you're done. You don't have to deal with initiative for the rest of combat. Generally, yeah. Turn. There, I think there are some games where each round, like each time there's mm-hmm. a new turn order, you do combat uh, initiative again. But the issue, like, with that becomes suddenly you're having to roll for this every single turn or every single time that it's the round of combat's over, you know? This is true. Um, um, well, and then it just becomes a time sink. In 1879, when I'm, I'm playing that game, we actually do roll every turn for combat. I don't actually, it doesn't really take that much time. We're doing it in roll 20 anyway, so you just, you, you hit the button and it determines where you're going to be in your turn order. I always wondered, like, do I like it or do I not? In some ways, I think it kind of averages things out a little bit better because maybe I'm first in combat one round and last in combat the next. And at least if the enemy is, like, first one time or last, it's not always going to be a total disadvantage or advantage for them. Right. Probably unnecessary in the long run. You probably want to have fairly small groups when you're doing it. You probably don't want to be running like seven, eight people in a group and have to have this happen every single time because of the time investment <laughs> right. of it. The, and, and that's the, the thing. thing. Everything takes time. So if you're spending more time just rolling this one thing, that's not a very built out mechanic just for determining who goes first in combat. Right. It's like, why? Why am I rolling this every time? And I could see that if you're rolling it every time and initiative actually did have more of um, more use in it, that would be fine. But then I, I started even thinking about this, like when it comes to initiative, unlike most other stats, you don't even have to think about critical uh, fails or hits. Like if I get an initiative of 20 or I get an initiative of one, all right. I'm either at the top of the turn order or the bottom of the turn, but there's nothing else besides that. It's not like I get double turns if I get <laughs> right on the on the flip side. You could do initiative on like certain attacks or skills or like uh, magic it could have its own initiative value, as it were, which is basically mm. the speed type stat if you wanted to like. But then it comes into like when you're playing Pokemon, kind of how their mm-hmm. priority moves. So it's like um, yeah. You know, quick attack almost always goes first. You yes. know, so then you get into that habit where that the like in Pokemon. I'm using this as an example. I've been playing it a bit lately, so it, it's fresh in mind. But fair. Um. Yeah. You know, your Pokemon has a speed stat, so maybe that's like your character's uh, initiative or your Dex is usually what determines your 
initiative speed for D&D. Um, mm-hmm. Although player character or the characters have their own like speed stat for how fast they are as well. Generally, like how fast they can move. So, but yeah, yeah, you could do that. But then say, what if spells have this is priority one, two, three or four? Like this will take action before, you know, another move, you know, mm-hmm. that's slower. Uh, but that then becomes a game of figuring out, like, all right, well, I'm going to build my character, and all the spells I'm going to take are priority one, so I always go first, you know? Right. And then you right. have to balance it out with, all right, well, if these skills always go first, then they're probably not going to be as powerful as skills that come last. So it's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I kind of feel like the more we're going to be talking about this in this episode, the more we're essentially making the case for why it should just be a utility that doesn't make it flushed out very much. I mean, much. there are different ways to do it, too, even without, even while keeping it a utility thing. I think there's other ways that you can take initiative and make it either more important or less important to your to your game. On on that note, one of the things that I had wrote, written down that I wanted to discuss, we might as well talk about that, was... Should initiative be affected by things like character decisions or the preparation that characters make ahead of battle? Should there be some kind of uh, modifier for what the characters are actually doing to initiative to determine? Like, because if I'm like staring at a brick wall and then initiative is rolled and I get uh, a like a nineteen. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Like, right. I, like my character is just oblivious of the whole thing. But if I've done all of this very careful preparation work so that I can get the jump on on like the thief in the back alley, and then I roll a one for initiative, it also doesn't really make much right. sense. Right. It's it's the your character is startled awake by an intruder at their bedside. Right. Who's going to go first? I rolled a nat 20. All right, you just woke up bleary-eyed and confused, but you go first. I stab <laughs> the intruder. All right, he's dead. Right. That, right. that doesn't tend to happen. No, no, it really doesn't. No, not, I mean, not in my personal experience. Allegedly. I mean, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. How do you feel about that? Should, should there be some kind of way to determine modification to initiative based on what the story is? doing in the characters inside of it i think well and specifically for D terms i think you could say give a character staring at a brick wall a disadvantage on an initiative for instance that would be just mm. an easy way to overcome that and be like all right you're like physically or not mentally prepared for this you're not expecting it so you get advantage or dis- disadvantage respectively so i think that would be a really easy one for like 5e uh or any yeah. mechanics that are similar but not everything is D. So, right, that's not always right. going to apply. Yeah, disadvantage and advantage do make sense to to utilize in that way. I don't usually think about using it for initiative as a mechanic, because, again, that whole thing about it being very utilitarian, in my, <laughs> it's just kind of like, well, oh, let's figure out who's going first. Even in then, it's like, all right, you have disadvantage on uh, initiative. It's like... Mm-hmm. So you're not prepared for this combat. Even if you roll a 20 and you roll a 5 on the other dice, it's like, yeah, you're not quite as prepared as you thought you were. Yeah, sorry, you shouldn't have been staring at that brick wall for all that time. (laughs) Shouldn't have been staring at the sun. Yeah, exactly. Because I always felt like if I was playing a character that was kind of oblivious, and then I rolled a number, and maybe this is just me as a player that wants characters to actually have weight to their decisions. If I rolled like a 20, and I know my character is definitely not in a 20 initiative space. (laughs) I really feel like it's my obligation as a player to point out to somebody like, uh, yeah, I'm I'm really sorry, Matt Mercer or whoever was running me, (laughs) just to say, uh, hey, I got a 20 on my initiative, but literally my character's staring at, like, the archway and is completely oblivious to this, so that really shouldn't count. (laughs) Like, sorry. I think role play can come into a lot of account there as well. Like, players can decide that exactly. Yeah, my character's kind of just like not paying any attention right now. Yeah. So, like, he's gonna, like, either you can be like, yeah, I'm gonna spend my entire turn just kind of becoming aware of combat or, or whatever is going on. Uh, which, from a role playing perspective, is, is great role playing, but not everyone does that. When it makes sense, it's like, oh no, I just want to brutalize this combat now. I mean, for me at least, I feel like when it comes to initiative, 
the stakes are a little bit lower when it comes to your roles for initiative than most other roles because it's just determining where you're going in a turn order. You're still going to get a turn. Um, it's Unless it's just, you get targeted and killed first. Yeah, but how often does that happen? Big boss. Big bad boss I mean, monsters. Unless it's one of your games. Yeah. At I'll, which point, I'll you. allegedly. Just, just kill you. <laughs> How <laughs> you better hope that you get a high initiative if you're in one of Alex's games. Otherwise, the boulder has a higher initiative than you. <laughs> Sorry. It's been Oops. rolling for a while. Uh, it's a good thing you didn't write Indiana Jones. Because the, b- the boulder would have gotten a better initiative score than Indiana Jones. And the movie would have been over very quickly. Indy, Indy had a good speed score. Yeah, maybe. He could move. He, he didn't get a high initiative, but he can move real fast. He has yeah. no armor. It's he's, he's zero. He's he's unarmored. So yeah, he can go real fast. He was probably a monk, you know. He, he got he was a scout build or something like that. He was something. Sort of thief. He was a tabaxi scout and uh and and unarmored, and so he could move like a hundred and twenty feet in a turn oh, or something geez. like that. Speaking of that, actually, uh, because you mentioned speed, I was thinking about initiative, at least in D anD. D is is a derivative stat for dexterity generally yeah it, well in D&D it is but in other systems there's something similar to usually like agility or something like that um usually usually initiative is based off of those but i'm trying to figure out and i, I think actually uh, one of the people in our forum actually mentioned this is uh, what would you do if possibly you made an initiative into um its own uh stat instead of a subset instead of a subset like if it was its own stat or if it was relative to like you were talking about uh speed like if my maybe my speed score actually determined like how fast i can move determined my initiative because it's telling me how fast i am i think i had thought of uh something for the game i was working on forever ago uh like where it was tied to either your physical speed or your mental speed. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Since, you know, Spellcaster might be pretty quick on the draw. They might not be physically yeah. fast. They might not be super agile, but they might have a really quick mind. Either attaching initiative to specific kinds of things that you can do, or having, like, initiative as a, as, as a thing all of its own. My only critique of having initiative being its own standalone skill is I think it becomes a dump stat. Yeah. I don't think most people are going to see it useful in comparison to a constitution or a strength or anything else that would be combat related. How fast I go in combat, again, doesn't really matter to me quite as much as what I'm doing in combat once my turn is up. Right. So I, I feel like if you had it as a standalone, most people would not invest points in it. Unless it's one of those things like where you occasionally see people build characters that have really high critical chances or something like that. Right. Um, when when it matters that striking first matters a lot. People will try to invest specifically in making your critical chance and critical damage incredibly high. Well, in that case, yeah, I I can see where you might want to invest in trying to get the first strike in as quickly as possible. But that's a very specific build. <laughs> right. For and character. that's for very specific people that build that way. Exactly. And if you're using it in points, like you would be using it for other stats, that is still a, a, a pretty big investment. You'd have to really be committed to a specific kind of play style in order for that to make sense. Yeah. I mean, you could always also, in the case of mental and physical being two different things, you could do a derived stat that's based off, like, your intellect or wisdom. Like, if you have a spellcaster, it could be based off their spellcasting stat and then their uh, dexterity if you wanted it to. But then for just physical characters, you'd want to have it based off their... um like their strength and dexterity or something like that. So if you have a combined on sure. two, you could do that as well to make it a more unique to each character build kind of deal. Sure. But all you're doing then is just kind of being like, all right, it's dex based plus, and then it's just like, all right, well, I still need dex or I need a really high like wisdom to offset not having a dex. Um, 
Yeah. But then characters yeah, yeah. who are, say, like, strength and dex based, like a rogue that's really stabby, for instance, would be. It's like, all mm-hmm. right, well, I'm just going to go fast every time because I'm a rogue. So it becomes right, this right. weird area of, of dealing with it. On that idea, too, of speed, I had this thought. I am speed. You are speed. Okay. On the, sorry, Speedy. You're the Flash. Yeah, see, the Flash always gets to have a uh, turn one initiative. Like, That's because he travels faster than... Anyways. Um. Yeah, exactly. He tra- travels faster than speed of light. On a su- quick side note, though, in uh, the DC Universe, if you have Superman, do you really need the rest of the Justice League? No. No. He just holds back. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why is everyone else here? I don't know. Uh, anyway... <laughs> We have a super being that could do literally anything you want. Oh, okay. Uh, thoughts on, on initiative being relative to speed of action. What if your initiative score uh, determines how quickly you act and how many actions you get to take? If your initiative is high enough, it also determines the number of actions or how, how many times you would take your turn. I think like people would just really abuse that then. Exactly. And I love that idea, though, because, <laughs> because that would actually make initiative really useful if your initiative was tied to the number of attacks that you do, or if your turn order wasn't based on rolling for initiative, but was based specifically on speed scores. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Like, if, uh, if I have a speed score of 10 and you have a speed score of 7 and the enemy has a speed score of 5, uh... You, you figure out, like, almost like a racetrack, like, how many, how, how long does it take you to get to 20? So it yeah. would take me, I, I could get to 20 faster than the two of you, so I would go, but I would also be able to lap you once every few rounds and take an additional turn because my initiative is higher. I think, I think that would be really hard to, like, bookkeep that way. Like, you'd be adding, a, that would be adding oh, yeah. in a whole new mechanic for it. And, like, if you oh, yeah. want to build a mechanic around initiative like that, you could. Mm-hmm. But, like, that's something you see in video games, like Final Fantasy, for instance, where it's like, oh, I used yeah. haste, so I get to attack more often, you know? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking about when I was, is that that is a video game mechanic more than anything. I occasionally like to theorize about what you would do if you took video game mechanics and see if you could implement them into tabletop more often than not, it becomes too convoluted. But. Yeah. The issue there becomes it's you're taking something that you're asking a computer piece, a piece of computer hardware to do or a program to do and trying to make it simple enough that humans can do it consistently and easily. Right. Right. Um, and if that were the case, we wouldn't need computers to do these things. Right. Yeah, the the easiest way that I could think about doing was literally just uh counting up to the to the 20 mark. Uh and saying like if you had a 20 or a 30 or whatever it was, whoever is making it to that mark first, you just like add add it together. So, I have 10, I have 7 and I have 5 for the three different initiative scores. Okay, so 10, then 20. So the person who got to 20 goes first. 7, uh, 14, 21, okay, now you're there, uh, and, uh, and then the 1 goes, uh, wraps around to the end, carry the 1, and then, <laughs> unfortunately, that's the easiest way to do it. Yeah, anytime there's math involved, I, I check out with games. <laughs> Some mathematician group would love that. I've played they with a bunch of nerds <laughs> that were, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. computer and math majors and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. they do broken things in games. Oh, yeah. And that would be, that would actually be one where if you were still rolling for initiative, that would be hell. Because somebody would get, like, a 20 on initiative and then their modifier, and they'd be taking, like, more than one turn per round. <laughs> while somebody, some unfortunate soul at the end would not get to take a turn for, like, <laughs> three rounds of combat. Or four rounds of combat, depending on how low their score was. If you got if you got literally like a one in initiative, you basically aren't in the combat at that point. Yeah, it's like I went last, but everyone's dead. Well, it would just be like, okay, I got a one. How long is it going to take me to get to that twenty mark? It's going to take me like twenty rounds before I even get to the score I need so that I can attack. Yeah, this is this is going to be terrible for me. So okay, so so maybe not that. 
Maybe not. Maybe not. We we touched on this a little bit earlier, but wanted to bring this back to to discuss it a little bit more. Is outside of combat, is there any use, or should there be a use for initiative or a similar system? I mean, if you're setting up like an ambush, for instance, it might make sense. If you're doing like a siege combat, again, that's still mm-hmm. combat, but like that might make a little bit of sense. Mm. Uh, if you're doing a social interaction, you could do that too. If you wanted to keep turn order of a social, uh, not combat, but you know, a social encounter. I guess you um, could utilize it in conversation in terms of who says what first. I think isn't there something in like the Doctor Who RPG about like uh, who talks loudest or who talks first being a big mechanic? Yeah, if I remember correctly, it's people who talk go first, people who take action go second, and people who do, like, combat, like, go last or whatever. I would think, though, that in just terms of conversation, and I do feel like conversation should have been fleshed out a little bit more than just, sort of, like, there's there's ways you could do mechanics on that. Maybe we'll talk about that at some point. But, um, but uh, the idea that, well, yeah, no, if I have a high initiative score, it kind of makes sense that I would be able to take the actual initiative in a conversation like I would also do in combat. Right. If I've got a plus three to initiative, uh, which is probably going to mean that you're a character like a thief or a monk or something like that, uh, then, yeah, it kind of makes sense that you'd also be talking first, maybe to your detriment. (laughs) Right. It might be a bad idea. Because if the other guy Uh, goes and does combat and you do conversation... You know, he might just decide that what you said wasn't cool and kill you. Here's a, another idea that I was thinking about when it came to initiative is uh, similar to like like a lot of your other stats for uh, skill checks and stuff like that. What if I'm trying to do like a, a quick action without people seeing me or before anybody can react instead of doing a dexterity check or uh, you, you, like any anything like that? Could we use initiative for that instead? And and uh, determine, like, if you're able to do an action before anyone can react to something. Maybe that should be uh, an initiative role instead of, like, a, a skill check role. It's possible. I mean, you could definitely try it, see if it works. But mm-hmm. would it work? Unfortunately, a lot of this is, is mostly to try and make initiative more useful than it currently is. I don't know if it necessarily makes the game easier or better or adds anything to the system, but right. it, it might make initiative feel better about itself. I don't know. <laughs> it needs to feel better about itself. <laughs> it really does. It, for, for something called initiative, it, it has uh, it's some issues. The, uh, the other thing I was thinking about since we were talking about making it a really convoluted system is actually simplifying it even more. What about if we just rolled initiative for each side rather than for the individual characters well then it comes down to you're still having to figure out when people um do what they're doing so like yeah if you do initiative like that then it's like all right well this our whole team rolled initiative of five and we go after you go but who goes like do we just go however we want and determine the outcome at the end right Right. And and that comes into where I, for my system and for a couple of stuff I've designed, I wanted to make it so that damage and stuff doesn't calculate out, like doesn't come into effect until the end of combat, like until the end of everyone's turn. Then what happens is you roll your initiative and it's just kind of like a turn order, who goes first, who goes last. But then it's like, all right, well, now we're doing like and actually doing the effects of everything at the end. So like mm-hmm. these effects don't take uh don't take effect until the turn's over and until the start of the next turn. So like if you kill everyone in the other party, you're not gonna find out until the end of the turn when they all fall down dead. Um Right. But part of that is more so so that it's um kind of more realistic where it's not like, oh, I took a turn and this guy died in one hit. It's like it, you're all going simultaneously. Everything should happen simultaneously, even though it's, like, six-second rounds. But, mm-hmm. like, it's hard to do that and not yeah. just be like, all right, well, I killed it on my turn, and you didn't get mm-hmm. to act in combat. And it's like, ugh, that's annoying. <laughs> the, the one thing I was thinking about, uh, probably when I was 
thinking about that is if you had it in terms of team one uh, goes and then team two goes for the initiative is uh, for a team building strategy and doing synergy between different characters, that would be interesting because your entire party could determine how do you want to address this situation? Who wants to do what? And how is that going to work with this other character's ability? Um, doing coordination like that would be uh, easier uh, just because everyone's acting at essentially the same time on your side. Uh, so, so you might be able to determine like, oh, well, I know this, this character is going to do this thing. So I'm going to do this thing from a coordination standpoint, that would work. It might not be very realistic in terms of combat, but then again, it's a game. So D D and D combat is not necessarily supposed to be realistic or anything like that. Yeah. It would definitely mean less rolling. It's not going to, it's not going to save you much time though, because, uh, everyone usually rolls at the same time. Yeah. So in general, do you really think initiative needs to even get fleshed out any more than it already is? Or I mean, is it fine the way it is? It can be. It's I don't see a problem if it is, but like there's also different ways you can deal with me deal with it as a mechanic. So right. you could be like, you know, we've been talking generally about rolling for initiative, but there are mm -hmm. other ways you can determine initiative outcome. There's cards. People do that sometimes. You, again, could have it its own stat speed, so no matter what, it's less random. It's like, all right, my speed is five. This person's speed is six. He's going to go faster no matter what. Um, right, right. Where ties have whatever method to determine, you know, who goes first after a tie. Um, but, you could, you know, there's a bunch of different ways you could, like, do that. That's not just rolling a dice and making it random as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the uh, thing that you were talking about with speed. I think that the the problem there is I don't think people really want, not that it wouldn't be realistic, but I don't think people really want that much of a constant when it comes to initiating combat. Which is so weird when yeah. you think about it. Um, because yeah. it's like, you're playing a game where everything's based on dice rolls, but mm -hmm. then you're like, I want the... I want the outcome of combat to be random too. So it's like, all right, is this a holdover from like JRPGs and RPGs yeah. where you like do that? Or it's like, all right, well, I go first because my speed's first, but like, I don't know what I'm getting into combat, whether or what. Like, I don't see right. the, I, I don't understand the reason why you wouldn't want something like that to be more consistent. I don't have a problem with it being random, but I don't know why you wouldn't want it consistent if it could be. I imagine the reason is mostly from people that uh, are afraid their characters are always going to be last in combat because their speed is not good or their initiative score is not good. And so they're always, they, they feel like if you were to roll, at least they have a chance of going first or second. Maybe um, it could also be the fact that, like you, uh, as opposed to like uh, JRPGs and Pokemon and things like that, your stats don't really go up every time you level up. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Um, and there's also probably a piece that, um, if you were the kind of GM that was just evil, uh, <laughs> if you were an evil GM, allegedly. If you were allegedly a G, uh, an evil GM, there is the possibility that you would make all of your monsters with a really high speed stat or initiative stat so they always go first. And if we are rolling dice, there is always the possibility that their monsters will not get to go first. I mean, yeah, but then GMs fudge and cheat too, occasionally, so... No, that's not true. They never do No, that. never. No. Um, no. GMs never do Alternatively, that. in a system where you, say, do have stats that you level up every time you level up, for instance, I know the system I was working on, uh, that was a thing. You would add skill and attribute points every level. Um, in a system like that, you could make initiative or speed, like, its own stat, and then mm -hmm. level it up so you could go from 5 to 10, 10 to 20, whatever like that. Sure. It's like you could use it as an up stat. If you wanted to, because then it would be like, all right, well, this affects how fast you go in combat, but it could also affect some other things as well. I, I mean, I would like to see initiative be used for more than just the whole starting of a combat situation. Um, I just, 
I, I feel like in a lot of systems, and uh, uh, since D&D is what we're kind of discussing, because initiative, I think, really starts there, most other things that you do in the system are handled by other mechanics already. Right. And so you could use initiative, like, to determine, like, um, essentially, like, reflex saves almost, like, stuff like that. You'd probably be eliminating a bunch of other things and what they're able to do. Um, yeah. I don't need to, I don't need to use, like, uh, dexterity and constitution saves if I have another mechanic that's going to uh, utilize all of that. Um, I, you know, I could use initiative to go and, you know, try to uh, steal or, or pickpocket the thing from the guy to find out where the map is and everything. But then I do I need my stealth skill? You know, right. like, there there's so many things that you could use initiative for, but you are kind of, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. You're, you're drunk Paul. You're robbing, you're robbing Peter Rabbit to pay drunk Paul, which maybe drunk Paul would like. But that's all you're doing. You're not really adding anything new to the system. Right. You're just using initiative to handle things it doesn't normally handle. And so I, I still, I'm just still struggling to try and figure out how you could make initiative more meaningful without it cannibalizing other stuff in the system. Right. I, I guess the, the question that I really have for you is, should we just kind of leave initiative alone? <laughs> I think it depends on what you're trying to accomplish overall mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. initiative is only help helpful for combat determining combat situations i think it's pretty okay in the kind of way it functions even if you use a different mechanic than just dice i think it's mm -hmm. pretty decent the way it is okay. um if you're trying to do something different where it's determined on how fast you are and your character's speed itself if you're trying to make it more inclusive fiddle with it Play with it. Determine if it's useful for a different thing, a different area of the game where you want it. Like, if you want to make initiative-based uh, roleplay. Like, figure out what would make sense. Because, like, in the sense of combat, you know, it currently works. It may not be perfect, but it works. Maybe one of the reasons why we hadn't talked about initiative up to this point was because, one, I, I never really thought much about it, honestly. Uh, I, I, it was just kind of like a thing that you do. Like I, I, I take out my twenty sided die and I roll for initiative and call it good. Right. Um. And and I never really had to think about it any further than that. And while it's neat to think about it in more interesting terms about what you could utilize it for, I, I just I don't know if it's necessary for most systems to worry about it. Um, yeah. And, and unless you really want to use it for something else or you want to have another derivative stat like speed actually handle the weightlifting for initiative there's probably a case to be made for that like maybe you don't need an initiative score at all if you have other things that are in the system that will essentially take care of it for you in D D, it kind of only exists because you have a dexterity bonus right uh <laughs> If it was outside of that, and realistically, you could have just said, roll for dexterity <laughs> right. and, and and get the same result. An interesting enough mechanic, I just don't know how much it really needs to get fleshed out. If you have any interesting ideas on how to do that, please tell us. If you, um, if you like the idea of uh, every creature and everything acting at the same time, but just determining who's going to declare actions, or if you like the Alpha Strike model, uh, let me know about that. I'm sure people are going to have some comments <laughs> on this episode, uh, allegedly. Alex, if uh, folks out there would like to take the initiative and discover more about Delve, where could they go? They shouldn't. Fair enough. They got a natural <laughs> one for initiative. Uh, if you want to find out more about Delve, you can always find us at DelveCast.com. That's right. You take the initiative, go over there, and while you are feeling especially initiative-laden, why not check out our Patreon? Because we do uh, release some stuff over there early, some as exclusive content, and extended episodes as well. So it's worth checking that out. Uh, and of course, thank you to our shiny level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Nick, and also our lovely Discord shiny patron, Drunk Paul, who apparently we robbed Peter this week to pay. <laughs> yes, perfect. I, I hope you enjoy that initiative.
does does drunk Paul want to have a high initiative or a low initiative? Um, you'll have to ask him in the chat. I will have to ask him in the chat. I I feel like a high initiative is always welcome, but I wonder from a narrative standpoint if he happens to be drunk at that point, if he would have a high initiative. I have no idea. I can tell you that when I'm drunk, my initiative is very low. Just saying. And hey, if you want to check us out in other places, you want to take some more initiative, you can check us out on social media sites. Uh, we are on Facebook for reasons. <laughs> um, and we are also we are also on Twitter. I am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delve Podcast. And if you want to even take more initiative, oh boy, you got an initiative score of twenty on this one. Uh, yeah, you can also check us out on all the kind of podcast apps, and you can subscribe so that you can get notified when new episodes release. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to list them all because there's just too damn many of them, but we are on all of them. Uh, we are on iHeartRadio and Spotify as well. Uh, Apparently which, not every episode's on Spotify, though. Not every episode is on Spotify? Oh, weird. It should. should be. Yeah, apparently it's, it's, it's missing the first ones. Oh, it's missing the very early. With, like, iTunes and uh, a lot of those other ones, they have a tendency to drop ones after, like, a hundred and something episodes, depending on how many episodes there are. That's so I, dumb. Uh, it, it is. It, it's kind of stupid. Because all the episodes are going to be available on our website. Uh, it's it's all available on Delvecast. You can go back in the archives. But for some odd reason, yeah, after there's, like, they only show, depending on what system you're using, like, the top, the first 100 or 200 episodes, and they just won't show the earlier ones. And unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. But we are we are on Spotify. It's just the earlier episodes. Now that we now that we're well over two hundred episodes, unfortunately, some of them drop off the end. It's okay. You can always go to delvecast.com. You can always find it there. Uh, I think that that's everything for this episode. We've we've been very initiative ridden, more so than in real life. Definitely more so than real life. So uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, we shall see you on the next episode. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.